Hey guys, Chase with Sherpa Equipment Company. Uh, today we're going to be installing this LaSalle rack on this 80 series Land Cruiser here behind me. Um, this rack is designed to work with 1990 through 1997 uh, Land Cruiser 80 series, as well as a Lexus LX 450s of uh, the same years. Um, so we're pretty much just going to jump right into it, um, go over what you're going to be receiving from us. Uh, you're going to have some side plates, you're going to have your wind fairing, you're going to have your crossbars, a uh, pile of hardware, and then you're going to have your mounting feet. Um, you'll notice if you've watched other rack videos, installation videos, this is a little bit more than we usually send out. With this rack, it's a uh, gutter mount system. So we have eight mounting feet. Uh, it's going to be four mounting feet per side. These are going to come pre-installed or pre-assembled for you. Should make it a lot easier uh, with the install. But you'll notice that right off the bat, the nuts should be tightened down about halfway down the bolt. I'm going to start by just loosening up all of these nuts pretty much to the end of the bolt. That way we get as much play uh, and it's going to be easier to get the, the uh, mounting feet installed on the truck. Um, you'll also notice on your mounting feet that you have some letters on the uh, top flange. What these letters stand for, you're going to have LS on all of them. That just designates LaSalle. You're going to have an F or an R or an M, which is front, middle, rear. And then the third section, you'll either have an L or an R, which is left or right. Left being driver, right being passenger. Um, this just designates where the mounts will go on the truck uh, to ensure proper fit. On the four middle mounts, you will notice that there's not a left or a right designation. That is because they are not side specific. So these mounts can go on either side of the vehicle and everything will still fit fine. Um, another thing I want to note before we get too far into this is that this truck came into us without a factory roof rack on it. So we will not be doing the removal of that. Um, it is important to note that we will be filling holes on this truck from the factory roof rack, but once we get up there and in this video, you might see some of the holes that are not filled. Um, we don't really know how long this truck hasn't had a rack on it, but some of the holes are rusted out, threads are gone. Um, if you have another rack on there or the factory one, we'll cover how to plug it. If your rack's been plugged for, or if your roof's been plugged for however long, you can either leave those in or replace it with the hardware that uh, we're giving you to plug the roof up so you don't get any water in there. Um, so that all being said, we'll go ahead and start this install. Um, and I'm going to start by installing our mounting feet onto our crossbars. But we're going to go uh, cross by by crossbar by crossbar here. So I'm just going to set the other ones out of the way for now. Uh, we're just going to be focusing on the fronts. Um, as you can see, I've loosened up the, I've backed off the nut off of these uh, bolts. That way I have that adjustability. Not super critical, um, but you're gonna probably end up doing it at some point during the uh, install. I find that when the nut is all the way backed off, um, it's just easier to get up there. Uh, they're initially tightened down just for shipping so they don't come apart in the package. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna take our two front mounts, which I have here, both designated fronts. And to install these onto the crossbar, I'm gonna take four T-nuts. I'm gonna drop the T-nuts into the slot the, uh, keep in mind, the round part of the T-nut will be facing the uh, bottom of the slot, so you should have the flat face kind of looking back up at you. Um, other than that, which way the thick end goes doesn't really matter, as long as they sit nicely in that track. Um, once your T-nuts are in, take your mounting feet, and we're going to take our hex, silver hex hardware here with our silver quarter-inch washers, and flip your mount upside down. The uh, Outer clamp should be facing the outside uh, end of the crossbar. And I'm going to just get these bolts threaded into those T-nuts below. And I will be leaving them loose. Um, so I won't be tightening these down. That way I have the adjustability uh, to slide it in and out depending on the width of the uh, truck. You'll notice through the install that most of this stuff stays pretty loose up until we're uh, really happy with where it's sitting on the vehicle, and that's when we're going to be tightening down. So again, get the other uh, mount up there. And that's one crossbar set up. That's going to be our front crossbar. Everything's loose here, and I still have full adjustability in and out on the mounting foot uh, on the crossbar itself. So once one's done, I'll set it aside. And I'll just repeat these steps with the next couple sets of mounts. Uh, like I said, the middle mounts are not side specific, so you don't have to worry about that. And there's going to be four middle mounts. So you might notice that you have four of them. That's correct. You should. And uh, yeah, we'll get these installed and uh, 
get them ready to get up on the truck. All right, so all of our mounting feet are set up on our crossbars. You should have four crossbars, two mounting feet per crossbar. Um, before we get these up on the truck, we're gonna go up and plug the holes that are uh, remaining in the roof from the factory roof rack. Uh, to do this, you should have a little pile of M5 uh, bolts with some small bonded washers. I'm gonna be taking an eight mil socket and grab a handful of your uh, M5 bolts and we're gonna head up to the roof and plug those. So like I had mentioned earlier in this video, um, we have some thoughts about what had happened to this truck. We think it might have been resprayed at some point uh, or something along those lines. So you'll notice these threaded portions have just been exposed for, we really don't know how long, um, but some of these don't have the threaded portion in them anymore. So we're gonna just show you how to plug them on these two, which do have it. Uh, you're gonna take your M5 bolt, super straightforward, and just thread it into the roof. Should grab pretty easily. Um, and like our other bonded washers, if you've seen any other videos, all you're gonna wanna do here is tighten down to where the bonded washer starts to flatten out and you can see the rubber kind of starting to squeeze out, uh, out from the edges there. It's a little bit flat now and that rubber is now sealing the outside as well as sealing in towards the threads on the bolt. So now you should have no more uh, water intrusion issues here. So I'm gonna just install these on all the ones I can, on this truck at least, um, and then we'll get the mounting feet up. All right, so now we are uh, about ready to get our mounting feet and crossbars up onto the roof. Um, for this step, I like to recommend checking out the uh, diagram on the install instructions for kind of general placement um, initially for these mounting feet. Um, every truck might be a little bit different, especially if you stop, start hopping between the years uh, and then the models between Lexus and Toyota. But generally we find that um, installing them in a kind of general area to begin with uh, is a really good way to start and then you can kind of fine tune from there. Um, since especially on this rack, we're not drilling any holes, we're not bolting into existing holes. So you really have a lot of adjustability to make sure the rack fits properly. Um, so it's another good time to uh, check those install instructions. And also we're gonna have a friend step in and help us just to get these up on the truck without scratching the other side. Um, and then I'll kind of walk you through where we put them. Uh, you can use this as a reference as well uh, once they're up on the truck. When we're installing these on the truck, where everything again is just gonna stay loose for now, I'm referencing the letters on the bottom of the mount, the on the bottom of the crossbar, passing it upside down to uh, my buddy on the other side. This is the left side, otherwise known as driver's side. And you can just roll it over and it's easier to let one person go, get their side on and then the other person um, so here, just want your bottom of your mounting foot to sit in the gutter, and then this part is gonna end up getting tightened down on the bottom side of the gutter, which will be uh, the holding power to hold your roof, or hold your rack on your roof. So now we got the front on, move to the middle. Again, you have four middles, non-side specific, so it really does not matter which order they go, uh, but as long as you have four of those, you'll be set. And we're just gonna set these up kind of rough right now and adjust the, uh, adjust the placement once we get our side plates up. Um, again, also referring to that diagram. Uh, but yeah, so middles up, fronts up, grab one more middle in the rears. We have the uh, mounting feet set up kind of roughly uh, in the position, uh, referring to the diagram um, that we want them to be. So now the next step is gonna be measuring and getting the crossbar centered. Um, this rack with a gutter that has some width to it, it's not gonna be perfect measurements on centering back and forth. Um, but what I like to do is get it centered within a quarter inch of each other um, to start. And then at the end, we're gonna kind of just take a step back and then eyeball everything else, make sure everything looks centered. Um, so the way I center these mounts is uh, tape measure. And then I kind of, these mounts are a little bit awkward, but I try to grab the inner, inner uh, face of this mounting foot. And then I measure to the outside edge of the crossbar. Um, essentially, you're gonna wanna do this on both sides and get that number to match up on both sides and then do that all the way down the truck. Um, some reference numbers to uh, use here are, would be about four and a quarter up here. Um, the two middles are rated about four uh, inches on the dot and then the rear is somewhere around four and a half. So good starting spot, your truck might be different. Um, if it is, adjust accordingly, but that's how kind of get to, gets it to a good starting spot at least for everybody to uh, understand. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that the crossbar is straight across the vehicle. You don't want it 
uh, farther forward on one side, farther back on the other. Um, you want to do everything you can to kind of make sure that the rack is going to be sitting square on the truck once we get it up. Again, we understand there's no really reference holes or points on this vehicle. Um, and once we get the rack on there, you're able to tell a lot more by looking down at looking at the side plates and how they're uh, sitting. So now that these are pretty much centered up, I uh, just kind of give each one of the bolts going up into the crossbar a turn, just finger tight. That way it kind of keeps everything in place and we'll get some side plates up here and see how it's sitting um, and adjust these accordingly. We uh, have our side plate, getting ready to put it up here on our crossbars. Um, you'll notice there's some cutouts here. Um, these are gonna be wrapping around your gutter mounts um, and the slots right above each one of those cutouts is gonna be the mounting slots for our crossbars. So when I'm uh, putting a side plate up by myself, I grab two socket buttons, our inch long socket buttons with our uh, quarter inch washers. And all I'm gonna need is just two of these to start. Then I can come back, fill the uh, rest of the slots and the rest of the threaded portions of the crossbars. Um, it's a little awkward, can be done by yourself. Um, I like to usually get one going in the back and one going in the front. So we're gonna try that here. And you wanna, you want to be careful to keep the side plate off of the paint and away from uh, anything that could damage, damage glass or paint. And we'll just get one of these started on each, each end of here. So right off the bat, I can tell my uh, original position is a little bit off, but since we left everything loose here, we can just slide these accordingly um, to where we need them to sit. So we don't have any contact with the side plate or the, uh, the gutter mount. So right now I have the side plate up. Um, nothing's perfectly square, but what I'm doing now is lining up the crossbar, the uh, two holes in the crossbar with the center of each of those slots. That will just kind of make the rack look nice when it's up here and then be a lot easier to adjust forward and back once all of the bolts are in there and tightened up. So now I'll go grab some more hardware, get the uh, other six bolts in, and we'll take a step back and look at it and adjust as needed. So as I mentioned before here, um, I had to adjust the mounting feet a little bit. No biggie, uh, everything's still loose so it makes it really easy. But now what I'm gonna do is adjust my mounting foot and crossbar to sit again in the center of uh, the mounting slot. Um, this isn't 100% necessary, but I find that doing this early on helps uh, with the adjustability as we get more of the rack up here, um, as far as moving the whole rack back and forth. Uh, and you're not fighting yourself as much um, when you get to the other side, you can comfortably put the mounting feet uh, in the center of the slots on the other side as well, and kind of have a pretty good idea that your rack's gonna be sitting square. So I'm gonna get these all centered up. Uh, We'll get these tightened down to the side plate, at least one of the bolts, and get the other side plate up on the other side and take a step back and adjust the whole rack back and forth uh, as needed. The side plates are both up now. Um, I have them tightened down to the crossbars. They are centered in the mounting slots per crossbar. Um, so now I'm gonna go through the process of kind of walking around the vehicle. I like to do all of these things just kind of visually. Um, as long as the rack looks good, it, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of get set up. Uh, so I'm happy with where the mounting feet are sitting, especially in relation to our diagram um, that we refer to. Also, I need to look um, from the front to see if we're sitting farther to the driver's side, farther to the passenger side, uh, what we might have there. And it looks like we're pretty much just about centered. Um, with that half inch of play that you have in the gutters, it's not uncommon to have correct measurements, but still be sitting to one side or another just based off of where your gutter mount is sitting in the actual gutter. So at the end of the day, I trust my eyes and being able to look at it and make sure it looks all correct, not skewed. Um, you don't wanna see your side plate doing this measure wavy down the side. That means one of your crossbars is probably bound up or your mounting feet are crooked. Um, you also don't wanna see the rack. You don't wanna see the end of the rack sticking out farther than the front because that means also something's probably bound up. So I'm pretty happy with where this is sitting. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down the mounting bolts that are going from the uh, mounting foot up into the crossbar. That will lock down our side to side positioning. And once those are all tight, 
I'm going to start working on those gutter mounts, getting those secured and tightened up. And at that point, we're pretty much good to go, throw the rest of the uh, crossbars up in the fairing, and we're almost done. So I'm going to go up, tighten those 7 16 um, hex bolts going up into the crossbars, and we'll check in next for the gutter mounts. When you're tightening these bolts that go up into the crossbar, uh, it's important to not over tighten these. It's really easy to get carried away and really lean on these. But once you feel that uh, T-nut up in there kind of starting to bite, that's more than enough. So you're just going to want to make sure you get all these tight, but not, not too crazy. Um, once you do have all of these tightened up, we're going to keep our 7 16 and work on these gutter mounts. One last thing that we're going to do before we tighten everything down um, is we're going to ensure double check our fitment, triple check our fitment by putting our fairing up there. Um, the fairing should be sitting with a correct gap off of the roof by the time we get it up there and mounted. It should be sitting with no issues. This is a good way to tell before you tighten it all down to make sure that it's, the rack's not too far back or too far forward. Um, you'll know it's too far back if your fairing's sitting there sitting on the roof um, and that's no good. We don't want any kind of contact with that. So what we'll do now is set the fairing up on our crossbar. Uh, what I like to do is lay our fairing out, match up the ends to the crossbar, and then I make three little lines uh, from our, the holes on the fairing to the kind of same area on the crossbar. And that's where I'm gonna be dropping in the remaining T-nuts that we have. So you should have six left. Um, those will all be used in this step, attaching the fairing to the crossbar. Once those T-nuts are dropped into the uh, crossbar, it doesn't have to be perfect where they are. You'll be able to find them pretty easily here. Set the fairing up on the crossbar. I like to start with the middle. Um, we're gonna take our short socket buttons. I believe they're half inch. Um, and we're gonna line up, find our socket buttons, or sorry, find our uh, T-nuts below in the crossbar and just get those threaded in to the uh, T-nuts below. Again, like everything else, we're gonna leave that loose. Um, leaving it loose allows us to slide the fairing back and forth on the crossbar, which makes it a lot easier to find those other T-nuts if, uh, if they did get put slightly off-centered. Um, and once you do get all of those bolts started into the fairing, you can go ahead, line up the edges of the fairing again with the edges of the crossbar and uh, tighten those bolts down. Okay, so we just uh, threw the fairing up here in the fairing slot. Um, you can see that we have a nice gap off of the roof, which is exactly what we want. Um, and we just line the fairing, the uh, kind of where it comes up here, to the edge of the bottom of the tip of the side plate. Uh, that's on both sides. And then the most important thing is just making sure you have that gap. Um, if your rack's sitting too far back, you might have to, depending on how far back it is, you can either loosen up your... Uh, side plate bolts and slide just the side plate and fairing forward. Or if you need to make a little bit bigger of an adjustment, you can slide the whole rack itself forward, which both work. Um, we like to keep, keep everything as centered as possible, just kind of comes out with the cleanest look. So we like to slide the whole rack forward with the mounts. Um, the biggest thing when adjusting a rack back and forth is again, just making sure they both go up at the same rate, not one going up and another one getting bound up. Um, so now that the fairing's on, I'm happy with the fitment there. So now we are going to talk about the, uh, getting the gutter mounts secured to the vehicle. Um, this is one of the most important steps in this process because this is what is going to be holding your rack securely to the top of your truck. Um, when messing with these gutter mounts and adjusting them, uh, it's important to note that there are, you might have gaps depending on your vehicle. You're gonna probably have a gap between these two surfaces. You might have a little bit of a weird edge here but all of that is okay. We are mainly focusing on making sure that the bottom lip gets a good grip on this uh, gutter. And as long as we have that, we're securing the vehicle or securing the rack down to the vehicle. So it's important to note that there are some very, it, it's an easy mount to over tighten if you're not careful, but we're gonna kind of walk you through how to uh, make sure you don't do that. So right off the bat, I like to push my mount in, my gutter mount, it's all still loose. I like to push it in towards the truck and that's kind of, I can tell that's kind of where it's gonna sit. And then I'm just gonna start working these nuts up a little bit until they're about finger tight. You'll kind of feel that gutter mount start raising up with this adjustable slot down here. So I'm going finger tight on these. 
And then I'm also gonna go finger tight on this bolt that is coming through facing towards me and just get that kind of secured so it holds itself in place for the time being. Um, now that we've got that kind of holding itself where it wants to sit, I can kind of check, see how it looks. Everything looks good there. So now I'm gonna take my 7 16 and start tightening up the bolts that are going, oh, wrong way there. Start tightening up the bolts that are up and down on this mount. And you're gonna be wanna be very careful and just kind of work back and forth. And the most important thing here is these two plates are gonna to wanna to stay parallel to each other. If you see that bottom plate starting to bend up, that means you're putting that bolt and shear. Uh, we don't want that, that's gonna be over tight. So they take a lot of uh, patience and, and just careful checking uh, because it's really easy to go, go too tight on these. So again, working back and forth, keeping an, keeping an eye on that gap in between. I see it starting to just raise a little bit there. So I'm gonna say that's good on that side and that's about good on this side. Notice there is a gap, that's okay. That's intentional, that is supposed to be there. Once I'm happy with the tightness there, I'm gonna take my 11 or 7 16 on the socket and then tighten this middle bolt coming out. So that has now secured the, uh, the gutter mount plate to the mount itself and we've tightened up the, uh, we've sucked the mount down into the truck. So that should be a very sturdy mount which it is, we have one of eight on right now. That feels good to me. So I'm gonna just kind of move through out the whole thing. We'll kind of go through it once I'm done tightening them all up, check the gaps. They will differ a little bit between mount to mount, but uh, as long as those are parallel and not bent, we will be okay and it's not over tightened. Okay, so you'll, you'll notice on, uh, on this side here, everything's tightened down. Um, you have all different gaps here, but that's fine, depending on where that, that mount sitting in the track. Um, again, just take note, all of these have a small gap in between the uh, bottom plate and that riveted top plate. Totally, totally intentional and the rack is completely strong with, with no movement. So keep in mind, very easy to over tighten uh, and we don't, we don't want any over tightening happening. Okay, uh, so all the mounts are now tight. Um, our final step really here is to get these last five crossbars up on the rack. Um, you'll notice you should have five remaining. There's five empty slots. That's where we suggest put them. However, um, you can set these up really in any orientation you want, uh, depending on what you're mounting up on your roof. Whatever works for you uh, is the best option. Um, we will say we do recommend using all of them. Um, this helps with just the rigidity of the rack and this overall strength of it. So we're gonna get these thrown up there. Uh, we'll get a finalized shot of how it looks and uh, go from there. All right, so the uh, final crossbars are up in the rack. That pretty much summarizes our install process. Um, it's a good idea. Once you have everything up there tightened up to go back through, put a wrench on just about every bolt on the rack one more time, just make sure everything's tight. There's a lot of moving parts, especially on this rack. So really good idea to go back through, uh, ensure everything's tight. On that note, however, keep in mind those, uh, those mounting feet for the gutters. Uh, it's really important not to over tighten those. So. Just make sure it all looks good there. You can kind of pound around on the rack, make sure you don't hear any loose washers or nuts or anything like that. Um, if you do run into any issues during this install, please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, you can shoot us an email, give me a call, be glad to help. Other than that, rack looks great and thank you for watching.